experience in that I was actually hired by a company, Sony Entertainment, to come in and draw this painting as a promotional device for one of their film launches. And um, anyway, they, uh, you know, the Genesis World Record was not something that we initially planned on doing. They said, we want you to do this big Last, last Supper as part of this movie launch. It was for the Da Vinci Cup film. Yeah. So I, I said, okay. And I, I, they said, how big do you think you can do it? And I said, well, probably this big, you know, we could fill up the whole floor. And then, they, you know, the, the PR agency came to me and said, I think we can get a Guinness World Record for this. Do you want to try? And I said, sure. So it was really organic how it happened. All spontaneous. All spontaneous. And um, that, that project took me about three and a half weeks to complete. And there was so much detail on that painting. So, <laughs> a lot of work. Yeah. We know about your largest You know, in terms of actually making the art, but I oversaw the uh, reproduction of the Sistine Chapel ceiling. This was in um, San Francisco area. Back in the, uh, 2004, I believe it was? Yes, and five. Yeah, 2005. And, um, you know, it was managing a team of artists on a larger scale than what I'm used to. So that was a challenge, like managing artists. Okay. That's an oxymoron. Yeah. You just can't manage artists, you know? So uh, anyway, it was just getting all these really creative, dynamic people together and trying to get them, like, focused on focused their areas. On the areas. And, uh, you know, yes, you're in my space. I want to do that. <laughs> You know, there's all this stuff going on and uh, different energies, but uh, it was a, a hugely successful project. And we wound up pulling people out of the audience to help us because we, we were on a deadline. And we had to get the project done. And, you know, we we're like, we need people to fill in black. You know, just come over here. And so people would volunteer out of the audience. We'd give them some chalk. They start drawing. All eager to do it? All eager to do it. We had, you know, well over 35 people that worked on that painting at any given point. So, um, that was a challenge, but it was really fun, really exciting. Everyone had a great time, and the result was so spectacular. You know, it's, it's larger than what one person could do. So seeing all this, all this creative talent in one piece was really just so exciting Amazing. for me. Uh, you know, I don't really see that there's much difference in the level of enthusiasm. It's just that the younger students are... Um, you know, maybe haven't been introduced to the more complex theories and, or concepts that go behind making the 3D work, mm -hmm. so I have to temper that a little bit, but they're really eager to learn. So you can give them basic principles and they can go with it. The uh, more advanced students, I'd say the college level and the professionals, they already have a history of understanding behind them, so you can give them more complex problems to solve. But, um, you know, the really, the level of enthusiasm and also the level of ability you know, a lot of the adults have not really worked on the street with chalk before, so they're kind of new to this in a way. And so teaching them the techniques and how to blend and lay down the chalk is kind of the same across the board. It's hugely popular in the U.S., Mexico, Europe, you know, Australia. These, these festivals are just growing in leaps and bounds. Every community in the U.S. seems to have a... Uh, it's a nice way to get artists together. Usually the festivals in the U.S. are fundraisers for... Uh, participated in yesterday. Mm -hmm. It's not something that you usually do. Mm -hmm. so right. How was the experience? How it, did you? it was terrific. I. This is the first time I've ever done anything in a collaborative manner outside of street painting with another type of art form, combining the two. So it was a unique... Um, concept that was brought to me and I thought wow this sounds really cool because uh, Siddharshan's work is fantastic so 
it was very organic, very easy. You know, somebody batted out and threw out the idea. Let's do an eco piece. Okay, I did a sketch. I sent it to them. That looks great. Let's try this. And, you know, just really everyone was just right on board. Really easy, no problems. And when I got there, he had done this amazing sculpture of dolphins. You know, and I thought, oh my gosh, I have to step up. You know, <laughs> because he set a really high bar, and uh, it was great. It was a lot of fun. I haven't never worked on the beach like that before, so that was definitely a treat because the weather was beautiful and yeah, it was just, I love the ocean so it's nice to be there. Every artist's dream is to create a masterpiece. Which one is yours? Which one is mine? Uh, I think my favorite piece, I would have to say, is my mousetrap painting. And that was because the game, the game, or the idea for the piece was based on a game that I played when I was a child. It's very popular in the U.S. in the 60s and 70s, and um, the game was actually de designed by a man named Rube Goldberg, who is a, a famous American uh, writer, scientist, inventor, just a brilliant, brilliant guy. And he, he made this incredible game, so I thought, I'm going to do an homage to Rube. And the piece required five professional artists five days to make and it had multiple perspective points in the piece that was a little bit above and beyond what I typically do so I had some complexity and I actually designed it to scale so that humans could get on the game board and look like they were the, the tokens for the game so it was, it was an interactive piece it was a lot of fun and really enjoyed doing that do share with us an experience during your work that you're never gonna forget the bull walking across the painting. <laughs> you know, I, I had some crazy experiences here in India, you know, like wildlife, you know, getting on the artwork, and uh, that's the second time a bull has come near my painting. So um, I had a snake go across my painting once, that was interesting. Just, you just never know what you're going to get. It's, it's wild. You don't come across that in the U.S. So. <laughs> And when was the first time a bull walked through your art? Well, actually he didn't walk through it, he just kind of came really close to it. It was in Mumbai, okay. on the campus, and I had earlier seen the same bull okay. cornering a faculty member behind a tree. <laughs> so in the morning, you know, the bull was fully trying to get this guy, he was, be he was behind the tree, and I thought, okay, that thing is not friendly, or it could go rogue at any moment. So later I see the bull walking up the street and it came and kind of parked itself right in front of my drawing and I thought, if that thing turns towards me, I'm out of here. <laughs> so.